Welcome to Canines for America. My name is Ryan, and today we're going to talk about the five must have training tools. Let's get started. So let's go over the, the most important, I think, tool in your tool bag is going to be your beef stew meat. Um, it's a great way to introduce yourself with your canine and develop that working relationship. Now, how do we use that beef stew meat? So when it comes time to train, we want our dog to be incredibly hungry. Therefore, they're going to be motivated to perform the tasks that we ask to be rewarded with that beef stew meat. I want to start cutting back on the intake of my dog's regular diet. So if I'm going to be training this week on a Monday, maybe starting Saturday night, I'm going to skip, uh, I'm going to cut the, instead of three cups of food that night, I'm going to give the dog one cup of food. Sunday morning might be a half a cup. I'm going to really reduce that dog's intake. So again, make sure your dog is hungry before you get into training. When I introduce the food, the food's going to keep that dog in a very low stem, uh, a stem rate of excitation. We want that dog always to be around a six and a half to a seven, seven and a half, because that's our target range for learning. Um, a couple things to, to remember, if you have a small puppy, we want to introduce the beef stew meat very, very slowly. We don't want to be using a pound of stew meat in one sitting. We can take that pound and we can use it throughout the, the 24 hour clock. 10 minutes in the morning, maybe a quarter of a pound. We'll do 10 minutes later in the afternoon, another quarter of a pound throughout the day. If you have a bigger dog, you can do a 10 minute session and you can go ahead and use that one pound of stew, uh, stew beef meat. The thing to also be kind of focused on, we're introducing uh, food into the dog's uh, system. We don't want to be doing any high level activity, a lot of jumping with the dog, um, a lot of twisting with the dog, because one thing we don't want to do is flip that dog's stomach because um, that's going to be a serious issue that we're going to be rushing to the vet on. So be very cautious on how we use our food. Now, every dog has a different level of excitation and, and uh, excitation threshold. So depending on your canine and their temperament, you're going to have to kind of zero in on what toys and hold what value. So now let's get into like kind of my bag of tricks to see what kind of a toy we want to bring into our training bag. Ball is a great toy. A ball on rope is a great toy to interact with the dog and to see what level um, of excitation you can create. Um, any type of uh, a tug, they might not like a, uh, a ball. The ball level might be low. A, a good tug toy. Um, Hose from a, a fire. Fire hose is always fun to tug with. <laughs> Creates a lot of great stimulation. Anything that we can tube, anything you can get the dog to jump on and we can play a, a fighting tug game or have the dog retrieve something. Great toys to always have in your bag. So at the end of the day, the two biggest pieces that I'm gonna look to have in my training bag are gonna be this ball, very effective and probably this jute tug. I can do a lot with this jute tug. I can do a lot with that, that uh, ball. These are probably going to be the two biggest things that I'm going to have in my training bag, must have. Now, depending on your dog's temperament and the training method selected will dictate your next tool. So I have a chloric dog. I'm going to need to use the contrastive method or the mechanical method. You guys are going to need to have to have a chain. I prefer a thin link chain. We don't want a pincher. We don't want anything that's invasive. This is going to be invasive enough, but when you're working with the chloric canine, melancholic, or even sangui, using this tool in the contrastive method and using this tool mechanically is not going to affect your dog. We don't use this to choke the dog. We don't use this to harm the dog. What we're trying to create is we're trying to create a sound with the chain. When we pull, the dog hears the sound of the chain. Contrastive method, you're gonna find out how we use it with the beef stew meat while using the chain. Mechanical is just gonna be the chain only. But what we're looking for, guys, is we're looking more for the sound that the chain will create 
as we're imprinting the conditional reflexes with our dog. The next big tool that you're gonna to have to have in your training bag, there's gonna be two of them that I recommend. The very first one's gonna be a short lead. This is where we're getting into our leads. The very first one, you can see this lead is probably no more than eight inches total. But this is where you, I think in our sit 101, you see we talk about a five by five area. That's why you don't need anything longer than this eight inch. With your chain, contrastive method or mechanical method, you're able to keep the dog completely close to you, to your foos, to your down or off, whatever language you're creating. But it's a great, great lead to keep your dog very close and you're able to handle um, your dog in, in his or her movements. So again, eight inch, small lead, definitely need to have in your bag. And then the last one I would recommend when you're taking your dog on walks right now, 15 foot lead. You need at least a 15 foot lead. Don't get anything bigger because it's gonna be a very difficult for you to kind of handle um, that lead. But when you're taking your dog on walks, you don't want your dog on a five foot lead. Your dog's not really getting any freedom for you. When you take your dog on a walk, it's to give the dog, it's your time. It's, uh, excuse me, it's the dog's time, right? So you want your dog to feel that they're, they have great distance from you and you're not in so much control. 15 foot lead, eight inch lead, those are the two I want you to have right now and we'll get into more depth about that. Now the last tool we're gonna talk about, and I do believe it is a must have in your training bag, it's, it's a controversial piece of equipment. We'll get more in depth into it, but guys, you're gonna need um, an electronic collar. Now we want an electronic collar that does vibration, tonal, and it also has the ability to do stimulation. You're gonna want this piece of equipment in your bag. We will get in depth on how to use this tool appropriately. You wanna stay away from STEM. There really is no canine. If you follow our 101, our food method, our contrastive method, our mechanical method, if you follow our videos, you will never have to use this piece of equipment. But at the end of the day, I need an insurance policy, depending on the workability of your dog and what they're performing in, in the field. This is a great piece of equipment to have to save your dog's life because it is virtually impossible to train on every stimulation that your dog might come in contact with. So at the end of the day, I need something that will overrule any external stimulation that my canine might get involved in. So again, we'll get into more depth on, this, on the electronic collar, but we want one that does stem, tonal, and vibration. Hey guys, thanks for watching Tools Needed 101. Please make sure you watch our Tools 102 as we're gonna take each and every one of those tools and dive deep into them. Thank you for watching. Make sure you click and subscribe and please give us any feedback um, in our comment section. Be very much appreciated. And again, thanks for watching.